Datadog, a data visualization and op observation tool on a SaaS basis that's available to enterprises throughout North America, reported earnings last night and shares open down about 5%. This is a rather large holding for myself. So what does this quarter mean and what should we do about it moving forward? We'll spend the next 10 minutes trying to figure that out. My name is Brian Stoffel. Thanks for joining. And I want to give a shout out to finchat.io for sponsoring today's video. So let's look on the top line for this $41 billion company. Revenue <clears throat> grew 26%. That easily outpaced Wall Street's expectations and management's guidance on the bottom line. A non-GAAP kind of tax-adjusted earnings per share of $0.44. Cents. Don't read too much into that, up 91%. That met Wall Street's estimates, slightly beat management's guidance. Now, if we look at non-GAAP, again, non-GAAP, that means it's primarily excluding stock-based compensation uh, results. It looks pretty good when we look at margins. Look at this. Gross margins expanded to 83.4%. Operating margins expanded by a huge margin to 28% and net margins at 26% markedly better than the year ago quarter. We'll dig into why that was the case in just a second. But also look at this free cash flow more than doubled to $200 million for the quarter. Net income also more than doubled on a non-GAAP basis. And the balance sheet is in very healthy shape with just shy of $2 billion in net cash on hand. Now this is on a GAAP basis, so the numbers won't match completely, but the dynamics are the same. Look at this. What we see is that revenue was up 26%. The cost of that revenue was only up 8%. When that's the case, that's great because it means that gross profit can grow even faster, up 30%. And kind of the icing on the cake is that all those operating expenses were only up 12%. Think about that. Operating expenses up 12%, revenue up 26%. That's how those margins expanded so much. It is worth noting that there was almost grotesque, grotesque dilution from the year ago quarter on a diluted, average diluted shares outstanding basis. They were up 11%. Now, we don't know that all of those shares will convert, but that is some heavy dilution right there. Uh, now, I want to head over to finchat.io to look at kind of under the hood, what were some of the other things that happened during the quarter? And what we can see here is if we kind of zoom out just a little bit, what we see if we head on over to this tab right here called segments and KPIs that you can get if you subscribe to finchat.io. They've already updated this less than a couple of hours after the company came out with earnings. The total number of customers that the company has was up. It continues to climb uh, overall. It was up very nicely for the quarter. If we go down and we say, well, okay, we know how many customers there were. What if we look at the number of customers who pay $100,000 per year? That kind of gives us a better look at what's going on. And when we look at that, what we can scroll up and see here is that it grew from about 2,800 to about 3,200. That is 15% growth in $100,000 uh, customers. We can close this one and say, well, okay, what about the number of customers that are bringing in a million dollars? And if we look at that, that was up from 317 to 396. So about 400 customers paying Datadog a million dollars per year. That is 25% growth from the prior period. And then of course, we want to look at the dollar-based net retention rate. And what we look at when we look here, we need to remember what exactly this number means. This number means if it's 100%, that means that Datadog hung on to all their customers from the prior year and had them spend about the same amount. If it's higher than that, it means that they're actually spending more. So where did the company land? We can look up here and what we can see is that the company has a dollar-based net retention rate of about 115%. Now that's down from where it was. It was 130% a year ago, about 120% in the last quarter. But that means that they're still paying 15% more. If there was some little bit of weakness in the quarter, it might have come from this. Why? Because when Amazon came out with their earnings and they said that quote unquote optimization is done. I think that there was a lot of belief that maybe there would be a really re-acceleration of the dollar-based net retention rate in this quarter. That wasn't the case, but 
let's go into the rest of the quarter because there was some other information that I think is really interesting to point out. The company is now calling out the number of customers that have two or more, four or more, six or more, and starting this quarter, eight or more tools. Now, this is incredibly important. Why? Because it is an evidence of both optionality, which means that the company can come out with new products that, that customers love, and a moat, because the more products that a com uh, company is using of Datadogs, the higher the switching costs become. So all I did was I took these numbers here, the percentage of customers, and I multiplied it by the total number of customers. And then that gives me the widening moat right here, plus optionality, the number of customers using all these different products. So let's go through it. The number of customers using at least two products was up 21% to about 23,000 customers. The number using four or more products was up 32%. The number using six or more products was up 44%. And the number using eight or more products, these are the customers that are the most likely to stick around because the switching costs are so high, up 77%. So overall, those numbers look pretty good. Now let's turn to guidance. Management said that in the current quarter, the midpoint of their range was for 22% top line growth. That met Wall Street's expectations. Remember that this company usually under promises and over delivers. So I wouldn't be surprised to see them come in with 23 or 24% growth instead. For the full year, guidance is for 21% growth. Wall Street was hoping for 22%. Again, remember, they usually under promise over deliver. So I wouldn't be surprised if this was more in the 23 to 24% range. What am I going to watch since this is a key holding for me moving forward? Well, first, I'm going to look at the dollar-based net retention rate. It, need, In my opinion, it needs to stay 110% or higher. Um, number two, multi-product usage. So that's the chart that I made that I just showed you. Number three, free cash flow, which was very strong. And number four, the outlook. I think the moat direction is definitely widening around the company. And the thesis is very much on track, which is why it scores very well for both Brian Froldy and for myself. But next, we need to move on to valuation. And to figure out valuation, we need to ask ourselves, what stage of growth is this company in? And I would say it's between stages three and four, which gives us some different metrics that we can look at. And again, for that, we can go, go on over to finchat.io. Now, I want to say that if you want to use this tool, finchat.io, you can click on the link in the show notes below and you will get a discount on a subscription to it. This is a tool that I use every day and it saves me tons of time. I absolutely love it. Um, so let's look at the company's PE ratio, where it is now compared to where it's been in the past. Um, and so what we see is that, look, this PE ratio, it, it isn't cheap. Okay. There's, there's no doubt about that. I forgot to hit this button to pull it up. I'm sorry. So we see that the PE ratio is, is not cheap. It is expensive. Um, because it is not even turning a profit on a gap basis. So that doesn't really tell us very much. However, we can look at things like the forward P ratio, which gives us a little bit better uh, of an idea for the valuation. It's certainly lower than it's been at any point in the last two years, but at about 80, that is still very high. Now, this company does give a lot of stock-based compensation, so maybe we could take a peek at where it is on a price to say, free cash flow basis. Again, lower than it's been in the past, but above 80, and that's still pretty expensive. And then we could do something like look at the forward price to free cash flow ratio, lower than it's been in the past, still very expensive. So it seems like there's pretty much no other way to cut this. This is an expensive stock, but the multiples themselves are the most common way to do valuation. But we can also do things like a reverse discounted cash flow analysis. And so I've done that and I'll show you what I found out when I did that. So I'm going to click over here and all I'm doing is, is I'm plugging in Datadog's ticker symbol. I'm plugging in their trailing free cash flow, which is about $600 million. And I'm giving it a terminal growth rate of about 3%, a discount rate of 10%. And what we're saying is, is that Datadog needs to grow its free cash flow by 25% per year over the next decade in order to justify today's price based on these assumptions. That seems, that's a lot of growth. Now, one thing we could say is, well, free cash flow might grow faster than revenue does. And that's a fair point. So what I did was I assumed that Datadog could accomplish a 38% free cash flow margin. Now that is very aggressive. There's no doubt about that, although it's not that far from it right now either. 
What if we put that 38% free cash flow margin in there? Then what type of growth needs to happen? And that's important because then that tells us what its top line growth needs to be over the next year. Well, if it was at about 38%, that would give it $800 million in trailing free cash flow right now. Everything else being the same, the implied growth rate is 21%. So how does that sound? 21% top line growth every year for the next 10 years. Well, 21% is what they're calling for this year might be really difficult to carry that out every year for 10 years. And so that leaves you wondering, well, if you own shares of the stock, what should you do? Well, it's a key holding for me. If you want to see what I will be doing, I have partnered up with Savvy Trader. And if you want to get a look at my real-time portfolio, the anti-fragile portfolio, you can click the link on the show notes below. You'll get real-time access to any moves that I make as well as a community where you can ask questions. Use the code YouTube to get a 33% discount on that. As far as this goes, I'm certainly not going to get rid of shares, but valuation is starting to become a concern. Let me know what you think in the comments section below, and we'll check back in on this one in 90 days. Until then, Brian 